Now, as the name of the video implies, this is the second part of a story, so if you haven't seen the first part yet, I'd highly recommend checking it out first, or this likely won't make any sense to you. I'll include a link to it in the description below. And now, without further ado, let's get back to the story. We start by getting a shot of General Leia Organa's Resistance flagship just as it comes out of hyperspace a good distance away from what appears to be a dreary, brownish red looking planet that is rather close to its sun. We're then on the bridge of the ship and see Poe, General Leia, and the rest of the Resistance leadership all gathered around a large display console that shows an image of the planet they're approaching. Leia then calls out, are we picking up anything? To that, Lieutenant Connix, who is seated at a nearby station, replies, no sign of any First Order ships, or any known pirate or bounty hunter vessels, or any ships at all for that matter, General. She turns in her chair, looks at Leia, and finishes, though the interference from the sun's radiation makes it difficult to be completely sure. Of course it does, Leia grumbles to herself, before calling out, Keep scanning for anything, and I do mean anything. Leia then says to Poe, Why do I have a hard time believing Gregor the Hutt suddenly developed a conscious and let us get here before anyone else? Poe replies, admiration for you or not, Gregor didn't rise to the top of the Hut clan by being nice. We see Poe's hands then ball up in a fist of frustration as he continues, there's also every chance the First Order's been here and gone already. And still hope that they somehow haven't, Leia rebuts. That's when Admiral Akbar says, do we risk trying to send them a message and letting anyone and everyone else know we're here? But Leia shakes her head and says, even if they get it, they won't respond. Poe, looking confused, then asks, won't respond even to you, General? Even to me, Commander, Leia assures. It's part of the protocol. Establishing a secure location is their top priority right now. They won't risk communications with anybody till that's done. Poe then says, but even sending out a general message would warn them of the danger that's no doubt coming. Allow them time to escape, perhaps. Or alert one that's already here and down there to our presence, Leia says back. She then continues, there could also be a fleet of First Order Star Destroyers in close proximity to that sun that we just can't see or pick up. Admiral Akbar then counters, or a fleet of Republic cruisers. No doubt all Republic captains would be aware of the protocol and rendezvous point. They'd hide in the aura of the sun and ambush any enemy vessels that enter the system. Leia groans and says, which could be exactly what the First Order is about to do to us. There is then a long, quiet moment of deep thought before Poe says, let me take my squadron in for a closer look. Leia immediately shakes her head and says, No chance, Poe. It's too risky. But to that, Poe says with a stubborn look on his face, Everything we've been doing since we formed this resistance has been too risky, General. But now we're trying to save what's left of the Republic before the First Order takes control of everything. There's no risk too great at this point. For a long moment, Leia just stares at Poe. On her face is a mixture of pride, admiration, and worry. She then says, which seems to catch Poe off guard, Your parents would be very proud of the man you've become, Poe. To that, Poe doesn't seem to know how to respond, and Leia says, But your squadron is the only one we've got left at this point, and we can't afford to lose it too. Poe looks like he wants to say something back, but shuts his mouth tight, thinks for a moment, and says, What if we take one cargo ship down there with a small strike force and evac the senators? Leia shakes her head and says, That's a terrible plan, Poe. Even you can't outmaneuver First Order TIE Fighters in a cargo ship. Not to mention, they're not just going to go with you. If anything, they'll be the ones that shoot you down, not the First Order. We also have no idea how many Senators may be down there. It could be two or two thousand. Poe simply says back, What other choice do we have? Plenty, Leia says back before she sighs and says, But none that are likely going to work any better than yours. Leia looks at Poe for a long moment, the concern for him evident on her face. Finally, she says, Your mission is a go, Commander Dameron. Take a cargo shuttle and a small strike force and see if you can locate the senators and convince them to evacuate by any means necessary. We then switch scenes and get a shot of Ray, eyes closed, sitting cross-legged in the middle of a grassy field. And slowly pacing around her, hands locked behind his back, is Luke Skywalker. We then hear Luke say, Try and let go of everything, Ray. Try and open yourself and feel absolutely everything around you. We see Ray's head nod a bit, and all the tension seems to leave her face. But a moment later, she blurts out, Is this my first lesson, then? We then hear Luke sigh and see him roll his eyes before he says, No, Ray, this is our attempt to further connect you to whatever may or may not be guiding you, to begin to figure out who you truly are and what you're meant to be. Ray opens one eye and looks up at Luke and says, 
So you don't think I'm meant to be a Jedi then? Luke frowns at her and she instantly shuts that eye again and offers a quick apology. Luke then says, Whether or not you become a Jedi is not my choice to make, nor is it one you're ready to make yourself. Not until you understand what it truly means to be one. Rey again opens one eye and looks up at Luke. But you'll teach me if I decide to be one, right? The only response Luke gives is to stop his pacing and simply fold his arms and give her a look. Rey once again shuts her eye and apologizes. That's when Luke says, It took me too many years to figure out that it's not all about training to be a Jedi. It's also about one's own journey to learn to become a Jedi. Rey's face wrinkles in confusion and she says, So you're not going to train me then? Again, Luke sighs before he says, Open your eyes, Rey, and stand up. Rey does just that. Luke then asks, why do you even want to become a Jedi? Rey gives a little bit of a shrug and says, Because I think that's what I'm meant to be. The reason I was given this power. To that, Luke shakes his head and starts to pace around her again, quicker this time. You have no power, Rey. Only a gift to feel and manipulate the Force in a way that very few others can. What you choose to do with that gift either makes you a Jedi or something else. Luke then stops in front of her, looks her dead in the eyes and says, It's about purpose. Will you use this gift for your own purpose, or heed the will of the Force and serve a purpose greater than yourself? That is the path of the Jedi, Rey. Rey nods and says that she understands, but then can't seem to help herself but to say that this really does feel like her first lesson. That's when Luke shakes his head, turns around, and starts to walk away, grumbling to himself as he goes. Rey calls out to him, telling him that she's sorry, but Luke just keeps walking. Finally then, a frustrated Ray plops herself down in the grass and sits there for a few moments before a type of resolve seems to come over her and she says softly to herself, just close your eyes and let it in. And that's when she does indeed close her eyes and a moment later there is a flash and suddenly we see Ray standing in a field of tall yellowing grass and see a small pointy-eared cat-like creature that seems to be frozen in place, though it does twitch a bit and its eyes are wide and filled with terror. And as we pull back and away from it, we see a young Ben Solo, maybe around the age of 13, with his hand extended out towards it, and an all-too-pleased smile upon his face. That's when we hear the voice of Luke cry out, Ben, let it go! And instantly, Ben lets his hand drop, and we see the creature hiss at him before it just runs off into the grass. Ben then turns around and lowers his head shamefully as we see Luke, wearing Jedi robes with the hood up, approaching him. Where did you learn how to do that? Luke demands. Where did you learn how to separate a living creature from the force around it? Had you held it there any longer, you would have killed it. Ben then replies, staring at the ground. I didn't learn it from you because I don't learn anything from you. You're too afraid to teach me. Luke shakes his head. I'm trying to teach you, Ben. I'm trying to help you every way I know how. Yet, I'm also still trying to learn. There's just so much I wasn't taught by my masters. Ben looks up and there are tears of frustration in his eyes as he says, what more does the legendary Luke Skywalker need to learn, renowned throughout the galaxy as the slayer of Darth Vader and the Emperor? Luke now sighs, shuts his eyes, lowers his head, and says, That's not exactly how it all went, Ben. Then how did it go, Ben demands. Why won't you tell me about how you defeated them both? Why won't you train me to be that powerful? Luke then says, I didn't defeat them. In the end, the man Darth Vader once was returned to the light and turned on his master and destroyed him. Ben shakes his head. And it's hard to tell if he just doesn't believe it, or if the truth simply disappoints him. Ben then says, Vader was too strong with the dark side. He would have never turned back to the light. He would have never given up that kind of power. That proclamation seems to truly trouble Luke, and he lays his hand on Ben's shoulder and says, There is much you don't know or understand about Darth Vader. Ben quickly knocks Luke's hand away, takes a few steps back and says, No, there's much you don't understand about him. What was he to you? A monster you sought to destroy? nothing more. But to me... But Ben cuts himself off, shakes his head, and falls silent. That's when Luke says, whatever this is that's coming for you, Ben, it's not Darth Vader. It can't be. He was destroyed. Nevertheless, I will find a way to stop it. I will find a way to free you from it. I promised as much to your parents, and I make the same promise to you now. Ben then shakes his head and declares as the tears start to streak down his face, My parents, if they cared about me, they wouldn't have sent me away with you. Luke shakes his head, moves closer to Ben and says, The last thing they ever wanted to do was to let you go, but they didn't know what else to do anymore. They believed I could help you, Ben, and I will. But Ben shakes his head to that and says, No, they were afraid. 
just like you were afraid. You refuse to train me properly. I know it. Luke shakes his head vehemently to that and says, No, Ben, I am doing everything I can to help you overcome this, to truly help you become a Jedi. Everything. Ben then replies, If that's true, why can't we follow the compass? See where it takes us. Luke frowns, Because I don't trust it. Ben's face tightens and he says, You mean you don't trust me? Luke quickly says back, That's not it at all. But Ben nods his head and says, Yes, it is. I can feel it. I can feel your fear for me, just like I felt my parents' fear for me. And someday, unless you stop holding back and train me, I'll give you and them a reason to truly fear me. Ben then turns to go, but as he does, for the briefest moments, he seems to pause and lock eyes with Ray, who still stands nearby. We then focus in on the angry, tear-streaked face of young Ben Solo and watch as it morphs into the masked face of Kylo Ren. That's when we see that we're now on the bridge of a Star Destroyer and then hear the crisp voice of a First Order officer say, We'll be arriving in the Velclip system in moments, Lord Ren, but I can't help but wonder if it's the right system. It is, after all, completely uninhabitable, and I can't see why... But Kylo Ren cuts him off and says, She's there, Captain. I know it. Be ready to come out of hyperspace exactly on my mark, and immediately target an open fire on the ship's hyperdrive. The officer looks like he wants to argue, but keeps his mouth shut before nodding and saying, Of course, my lord. We then switch scenes and find ourselves back on the bridge of the Resistance ship and see that General Leia Organa is speaking to an officer about the status of Poe's ship, when suddenly she falls silent and turns her head as if she's heard something, and the look on her face is one of absolute dread. She then says, Order Poe's ship back immediately! Some of the other Resistance officers look at each other in confusion, and it's Lieutenant Connix who says, General, did I hear you right? And... But she gets cut off by another officer who cries out, a Star Destroyer has just emerged from hyperspace right on top of us, General. Leia then says, Get us into hyperspace now. Lieutenant Connix replies, What about Poe and the Strike Force? Leia shakes her head, That will be fine. This ship isn't here for the Senators. Now get us into hyperspace. Once more, some of the officers exchange confused looks before snapping into action to carry out Leia's orders. That's when the ship begins to get rocked by laser fire. A few moments later, Leia demands to know why they haven't made the jump yet but an officer informs her that the hyperdrive has been damaged, that it seems to have been their primary target. That's when Leia calls out, prepare to be boarded, before she lowers her head and says to herself, don't do this, Ben. And that's when the scene then shifts, and we see Kylo Ren in a hangar bay on the First Order Star Destroyer, standing before his Knights of Ren, and he says to them, the last princess of Ron is not to be harmed. Kill any other that stand in our path. The Knights of Ren all nod and tighten their grips on their weapons, before they head towards some type of special-looking First Order troop transport. Kylo then quickly turns and says to a stormtrooper wearing an orange pauldron that had been standing behind him, You and your troops are to secure the ship, but leave General Organa to me. The stormtrooper gives a single nod and replies, Understood, sir. The scene then shifts again, and we watch as several small First Order troop transport-like crafts leave the hangar bay of the Star Destroyer and head right for the Resistance ship. And when they reach it, they seem to magnetically attach themselves to the hull. We then find ourselves in one of those ships and see two stormtroopers operate some type of large blowtorch type device that is cutting a hole in the hull of the resistance ship. While an impatient Kylo Ren, saber already ignited, looks on along with his Knights of Ren. We then switch scenes entirely and find ourselves back on the island of the First Jedi Temple where Luke Skywalker stands calmly near the same cliff we originally found him just as Rey quietly approaches him from behind, and when she's but a few paces away, she calls out to him and says, You blame yourself for what happened to Ben, don't you? For this hatred in him. Luke neither turns around nor says anything to that, so Rey nods her head as if his silence has just given her the answer. That's what you're doing here, isn't it? She calls out. You're looking for answers, for a way to still save Ben. Luke shuts his eyes and says mostly to himself, it seems, There are no answers here. All I found are some dusty old books that are written in a language time long since forgot. And something tells me even if I could read them, they wouldn't give me the answers I seek. Then why stay? Ray quickly asks. Luke turns his head to and fro, looking all around him as he speaks. Because the Force is strong here. Stronger than anywhere else I've ever felt it before. And I have to believe they'll find me here. That my old masters will find a way to reach me here and let me know what it is I'm up against. Ray looks confused and then says... You mean, tell you about Snoke? But Luke shakes his head. It's more than that, Ray. Snoke is powerful, no doubt. But something else is at work here. I can feel it. 
something powerful enough to keep them away from me. Ray then says, but you've been waiting here for years while your sister fights the First Order. A look of pain comes over Luke's face, and he shuts his eyes and says, Leia, I've closed my mind to her. Ray looks extremely confused and even a little upset as she asks why he would do that. Luke then explains, I know her fight against the First Order is desperate, but I also know saving Ben is not only important because he's her son, but because he's likely the key to something that I don't yet understand. Luke then opens his eyes and turns around and faces Ray. If I reached out to Leia and felt the desperation in her, it would draw me back, and I can't allow that to happen. I can't go back and fight till I find the answers, until I know what I'm truly up against. The look on Ray's face says that she doesn't exactly like that answer, but seems to understand it. She then says, one way or the other, I think it's clear you're not going to find the answers here, or that it isn't just going to come to you while you meditate your days away. To that, Luke smiles and even chuckles a bit. What? Ray then asks back, confused. Luke replies, I almost hope I'm wrong, Ray, because of what it'll mean for you, but I think you may be what I've been waiting for all this time. Luke then nods and says, and you are right, the answers aren't here, but we must find them. We then switch scenes and find ourselves in a corridor of the Resistance ship where Kylo Ren is marching and being followed closely by his Knights of Ren. Suddenly, two Resistance troopers jump out from behind a hiding spot and both take pot shots at Kylo Ren. But Kylo simply raises one hand, freezes the bolts in air, and then motions forward with the same hand and the bolts go back the other way and strike the troopers. Two more Resistance troopers then come around a corner and before they can even fire, Kylo makes a swiping motion with his hand and sends their blaster rifles flying. Kylo then makes a fist with his hand and begins to choke one of them, but that's when the other resistance trooper draws his sidearm and takes a shot at Kylo Ren that he's not ready for. But without even a thought, one of the Knights of Ren all but dives in front of Kylo Ren and takes the hit for him. One of the other Knights of Ren then steps forward and heaves some type of spear-like weapon at the trooper that we can only assume hits the target when we hear the resistance trooper scream out. As Kylo finishes choking the Resistance Trooper, the Knight of Ren that took the hit for him slowly gets back to his feet, the blaster bolt wound in his shoulder still smoldering. Kylo then says to him, I knew you would prove yourself this day. You've always been the strongest amongst them. From his belt, Kylo takes a lightsaber that is not his own and hands it towards the Knight. He then continues, You are the first among your brothers and sisters to earn this privilege. The Knight of Ren then drops to his knees and raises both hands above his head, and Kylo places the saber in them and finishes, Now honor our master and the Sith this saber once belonged to. Without a word, the Knight of Ren gets to his feet, ignites the crimson red lightsaber, and strides forward as we hear the sounds of more resistance troopers approaching. The scene then shifts, and we find ourselves on the bridge of the resistance ship, where General Leia Organa stands with her head hung, as we hear communications coming in from all over the ship about how stormtroopers have taken this part of the ship, or how we've lost this person or that one and how there are now eight dark-clad warriors seemingly heading for the bridge. That's when Leia lifts her head and says softly, This is senseless. Surrender the ship. No one on the bridge makes a move or says a word, so finally Leia storms over to one of the councils, hits a button, and her voice is heard all throughout the ship as she orders all Resistance members to stand down and surrender. That's when the scene then shifts again, and we watch as Kylo Ren pauses his march when he hears the voice of his mother and the order she's just given. We then follow him as he continues to march forward, until we watch as he and his Knights of Run approach a set of doors that slide open as he nears them, revealing the bridge beyond. Kylo then walks onto the bridge, and his Knights of Run follow and fan out behind him. He removes his helmet and locks eyes with Leia, who stands a few paces away and simply says, Your surrender is accepted, General Organa. Leia then boldly walks forward and slaps Kylo Ren in the face, causing the Knights of Run to all raise their weapons, but Kylo quickly raises a hand and they all lower them again. How dare you, Leia then says. How dare I what? Kylo says back with an almost innocent shrug. He then continues, The resistance has acted as a rogue faction for too long, and... But Leia cuts him off and says, That's not what I'm talking about, and you know it. For a moment, and only a moment, Kylo has a look on his face that seems to be equal parts doubt and regret. Finally, looking calm and resolute again, he says, Han Solo had his chance to be Ben Solo's father as you had your chance to be his mother, but you both chose to give your son away, like he meant nothing to you. Leia, almost quivering with anger, then says, You meant everything to us. We tried to save you. Kylo nods and says, And I was saved, but not by the one you were hoping. Luke Skywalker failed you, and soon 
he will fail you again. Leia shakes her head and says, Luke won't come for me if that's what you're hoping to accomplish with all this. Kylo gives her a slight, cocky grin and then says, we'll see. Leia gives him a small grin of her own back and replies, don't you think I've reached out to him every day since he went away, begging for him to come back? Leia's grin grows when Kylo doesn't seem to have a response to that, and she says, you don't understand him at all, do you? All that time you spent with him, and you learned nothing about him. Again, Kylo doesn't have an answer, and this is causing the anger to quickly mount on his face. Leia then finishes, wherever Luke is right now, whatever he's doing, he's already working on a way not just to save me, but to save us all. We then switch scenes and get a shot of Luke Skywalker standing in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, R2-D2 at his side as the ship flies through hyperspace, and at the controls are Chewie and Rey. Luke then says, all the years I knew Han, and he never once bothered to tell me that he had a friend who knew something of the Force. Luke shakes his head and adds, sounds like something only Han would do. Chewie and Rey exchange a knowing look and smile as R2 slowly backs out of the cockpit before turning and speeding away. Luke watches him go and seems to wonder about it a moment before just shrugging it off. Ray then says, Maz Kanata was the one who had your old saber, the one who convinced me to go to you in the first place. I'd say she's a good place to start, and Han seemed to really trust her. Chewie roars something that seems to back that up, and that's when Luke lets out a sigh and mutters to himself, Han, I'm so sorry, my old friend. I owe you one. Luke then shuts his eyes against the pain for a moment before they shoot open, and we see fear in his face as he says, Leia... Ray and Chewie exchange a quick, nervous look before both looking up at Luke. Ray then asks what's wrong, to which Luke says, Ben, he's got Leia. I let my mind drift for a moment and I saw her with him. Chewie then immediately lets out an angry roar and starts haphazardly punching at the controls of the Falcon, and Luke says, N No, Chewie, no, we can't go to her. Chewie stops bashing away aimlessly and again exchanges a look with Ray, and it's Ray who says, We have to save her from him. Kylo will kill her, just like he killed Han. Luke shuts his eyes and shakes his head and says, he won't. He's not that far gone yet. I have to believe that. Ray shakes her head and springs up out of her seat. Chew and I watched him murder, Han. You didn't. I know you want to save him, but have you ever considered he's too far gone? Luke, his face completely calm, then replies, on the second Death Star, when I faced Vader and his Emperor, I had a chance to destroy him, a chance to destroy Darth Vader. But I didn't, for if I had... I would have either fallen to the dark side myself or been destroyed by the Emperor. There would have been no other way out of it for me. Briefly, Luke looks down at his mechanical hand and then continues. Instead, I put my faith in my father to destroy Vader, and he rewarded my belief in him by not only doing that, but by also destroying the Emperor. Luke looks up and right into Rey's eyes and says, If I face Ben now, without knowing what truly haunts him, I will be forced to destroy him. And if I do that, I will destroy myself, just like I would have had I killed Vader. Ray shakes her head in confusion and says, What about Leia and the rest of the Resistance? Luke shuts his eyes and says, We have to trust that another can save them now. We then switch scenes and find ourselves focused in on a face of a sleeping Finn, when suddenly his eyes open, and we see him try to move, but he doesn't seem to be able to. After he seems to make a few more attempts, we see him start to panic, which is when we hear the beeps and whistles of BB-8 and see that next to the pod-like structure Finn is encased in is, of course, BB-8. That's when Finn says, BB-8, BB-8, is that you? BB-8 responds with some beeps, and Finn says, What's wrong with me? Why can't I move? That's when BB-8 projects an image right above Finn where we can see a graphic of a human body, and then we see a graphic of some type of robotic spine that gets moved and inserted into the back of that body. And that's when Finn says, Wait, wait, are you saying they gave me a robotic spine? BB-8 makes some noises that seem to confirm just that, and after looking horrified for a moment, Finn just says, I can work with that, before then saying, do you know why I can't move yet? BB-8 then rolls forward, and one of his attachments pops out, and he plugs it into the pod. A moment later, we hear a noise like something is being activated, and Finn is able to now move. He then sits up, moves his arms and legs, and wiggles his toes and fingers before looking at BB-8 and saying, what's going on? Where is everybody? BB-8 lets loose a string of alarmed beeps and whistles, to which Finn frowns and says, I don't understand a word of that, but I'm guessing whatever's going on, it's not good. That's when the door to the medical bay slides open, and in shuffles C-3PO, and when he sees Finn and BB-8, he says, Goodness, I thought this med bay was empty. BB-8 then says something to 3PO, and 3PO replies, No, BB-8, I most certainly was not coming in here to hide from Kylo Ren and the rest of the First Order. 
That's when Finn's eyes go wide and he says, Wait, Kylo Ren is here on this ship? Finn then thinks for a moment and says, Wait, we're on a ship? 3PO, ignoring Finn, then says to BB-8, I could also ask what you're doing here in the med bay when we were all ordered to surrender. BB-8 whistles something, and 3PO says back, Getting help? And you thought just he would be enough? BB-8 then makes a reply, and 3PO again says back, What do you mean we should be enough? I'm not going along with any crazy plan of yours. It's bad enough when R2 always wants me to go along with his half-witted plans. Finn, clearly having enough of this, then holds up his arms and both droids fall silent. He then says, So you're telling me we're on a resistance ship and the First Order has boarded it and taken over? C-3PO then replies, Precisely, and Kylo Ren is here and has personally taken Princess, I mean General Organa, prisoner. For a very long moment, Finn is quiet and processing all of it. He then looks down at BB-8 and says, You're right, we have to do something. C-3PO then shakes his head the best he can and says, I have a bad feeling about this. And that is where this part ends. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you thought of this part of the story and what you think might happen next. So leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.